Okay. Thank you very much, and thank you for showing up. Even though it's late now, and everybody wants to sleep just a little bit before <laughs> the carrot dinner, also me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, we are from uh, Geogecko. It's a company based in Kampala. We are three at this conference, but we are uh, in total we are twelve, twelve with our students. Yeah, yeah. It's it's grow like when I started two years ago, we were five, and now it's, it's yeah, it's growing. So yeah. Uh, yeah, what we do, we we usually say that we are doing geo-intelligence, so we are taking people's data and then we make it useful and understandable. Uh, we have moved in a, we have very much moved in an open source direction in the latest years, both because we want to reuse what we develop, and we don't want to be tied to a to a license, and we actually see, especially in in the humanitarian sector that there is more and more focus on open source tool. So I think in the in the East Africa region, I think we kind of like hit the wave. Uh, so so that's also why we can see that there is more and more demand on these um, um, open source tools. So yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, so you can go open source in the real world. Uh, we will talk about how we build the portal, that's the SIA, then you will show the portal, and then we have some questions and discussions. Uh, should, should I? Okay, so basically what, uh, maybe uh, you haven't seen the portal now, but basically what we'll be using is uh, Leaflet and D3. Um, actually, this is another portal, but it's very important to show because it kind of, it's, uh, did it zoom out again? Two seconds. Strange. Let's try again. Okay, here we go. Okay. This is not the portal that we are supposed to talk about, but it's uh, an important portal to understand because that's another project we had. And so a lot of the elements that we are using in this portal is actually something that we, we used in the Kampala city portal. So uh, it's all about filtering data and then so on. So what this does is that you can filter on the right. You can see that like you can go into the data and see, okay, I want to see areas where between 60, 76 and 100 percent is engaged in uh, subsistence farming, and of those, I want to see in uh, how many that are owns a radio. So you can like dig into the data and and like filter on data, and it's just a functionality that when it when it's up and running and you have all the data in place and and the system and all the JavaScript and so on, then then you can then you can reuse it again and again. Yeah. It's actually open source, so and I, I think it's it's not it's not well documented, but it's understandable. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not a messy code, it's it uh, it's 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 clean enough. So you can actually just implement then if you have some polygons, have some data, and then change the names and so on. So it should be easy enough. We we will share it on yeah, it's both in the presentation and, and we will also share the link afterwards. But yeah. Okay. So Kampala portal. Hello everyone. Um Desire from GeoGecko. Um so this is actually the portal that uh, we're talking about, uh, social protection in Kampala. Uh, a bit of background to it. Uh, it's, uh, oh, I don't know if I can, yes. So it was built by GeoGecko uh, for the city authority, Kampala city authority, uh, paid for by UNICEF. Um, and the aim of this portal is to kind of, because there's a lot of, uh, programs and initiatives going on in the district, but how do you keep track on all of this? How do you know what's going on? Um, so, and recently there's a big push to 
to aim at uh, adolescent girls and not not aim uh, to to help protect them. Uh, and you need to find out what challenges they're going through and all this. So there's a lack of information to people trying to run these programs, and and we the, the challenge was for UNICEF: how do we get this information out there, and how typically how would people interact with it? How would people use it? How would how could it help to improve the situation in Kampala? Um, so what GeoGecko suggested is uh, four products. Um, in humanitarian circles, there's a who does what where map and when map. Um, this yeah, typically g gives information about what kinds of programs are going on, so you don't have a situation where 10, 10 programs are running all in the same sector, yet there's a gap somewhere. So it helps identify gaps. Uh, an, an infrastructure map showing where different facilities are, um, health centers. So this involved, of course, sourcing data, which, as we all know, is fun. Um, then within the district of Kampala, the capital city of Uganda, there's um, parishes. This uh, is a lower administrative unit. So we try and, and uh, profile each admin unit so that uh, and compare it to district averages for let's say, um, name it, uh, how many households are being headed by um, a teenager. Um, and then we have a story map which has four stories from four different, uh, uh, I don't want to say four different, go like four different scenarios. So you have like the, um, upper, um, the more well to do. Yeah, I can. So we'll go through all these later. Um, so I think an interesting thing, uh, so I'll start with the 4W actually. So, so similar to what we just saw with the filterable districts of Uganda, on the right you have some information about all the programs going in, so that's the, and who's doing them, uh, where are they doing them, so these are all parishes within uh, Kampala. On the right, you have a set of filters. You can filter by sector, so education, justice and law, etc. Which parishes are they going on in? Which organ you can filter by organization and organization type. So if I wanted to see where Agora is working in nine parishes in public administration, it's a non-government body, and then I can break down what they're doing and see the durations for these different projects. So it's a way of so it's self-reporting, so there's one central point of um, where data is stored and managed, and all this is, and actually it's managed through, um, I'm not trying to make any changes. So it's all managed through Google Sheets, because you don't, what we're trying to build here is a solution where anyone could, you don't have to learn how to code in D3 or leaflets, you just have to manage, um, uh, can you, do you want to? Yeah, that's right. So we don't want a situation where someone has to learn how to code or ma maintain code. We, you, all you have to do is manage a Google Sheet, add entries, remove entries at will. It's easy enough, people are familiar with spreadsheet programs rather than confusing them with uh, callbacks <laughs> and promises in uh, JavaScript. So. Um, so the managing body only has to update and maintain a Google Sheet and that immediately powers the 4W map, which makes it easy to use and frankly, yeah, it's, uh, hang on, data. Yeah. So you just, it's, yeah, I mean, it's just a Google Sheet. So with this, um, programs report uh, report, uh, well, their name, which organization is providing this information, for hopefully the same as, so if there's a difference between implementing partners and donors, all that's catered for, where, so it's the table is split into these four columns, which power, who, that power the who, the where, the when, and the what that they're doing. So, where are they doing it? Um, what is it that they're doing, um, and so on and so forth. So it's just, it's a simple solution to 
get some information out there. Um, and you don't have to learn how to code. Um, should I take the next ones? I don't know. Yeah, that's, um, I could provide some background. Uh, we tried to also put in some information up from the census that carried out about uh, child poverty and all this information that helps make decisions about where to go and all this. Um, maybe, do you want to take this one? Yeah, no, it's basically the same, you can just take it. Um, yeah, so with this we're showing uh, this, this health, education, protection and water. Um, so this portal shows different infrastructures. For example, if you want to know where all the public toilets are in, well, not all, it's not, well, where the public toilets are or aren't in, uh, in Kampala, then you can uh, show them on the map um, with some information about who owns it and all this. But um, so the bulk of this particular portal was asking for and hopefully getting some data from the city authority about where all these facilities are, rather than them keeping it all in um, shape files in their own system. So it's a way to know and maybe try and, it's not, it's just an information map, it's not any kind of analysis, it's basically just points on a map. But um, for example, you can use it to kind of see, okay, why is there no police post in, in that particular parish. Maybe there's, and then it's reported that there's a high level of crime in that particular par parish. Maybe it's good to uh, invest in that. So, so it's just a way to see what do we have um, in terms of infrastructure within the city in case you're trying to support any, um, protect any social um, rights. So that's basically it. It's just to show some information, some because not in one central place, so anyone can access it. Um, and then for this, we have uh, the parish, parish information. Uh, parish information as to how many people have, uh, for example, the last on the list is how many, this is all from uh, a census that was carried out, um, I think in 2014. We are facing the same problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they are they are collecting it. They are they are spending a lot of time on it, but it only gets out like a few years after, and there's just so much going on. So it's just really annoying that we can only rely on this data. But actually, part of this was also like to show what data can do. So so to give to to show to KCCA that and to UNICEF that. You can actually get your data out there very easily. That 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 is our hope that it will also allow them to to kind of it will motivate them to share their data more. So that I think that was the the, the whole idea of the social social protection portal. I think UNICEF wanted to push them in that direction. Um, I will not say that they succeeded completely. Uh, we have to be honest about that because uh, the, we ran into some problems with the uh, with the ownership because UNICEF they want to give it to KCCA and KCCA they yeah they they really liked it and so on but but someone had to take the ownership and someone has to update this who does what where map for example uh, and and it's a whole cooperation between the GIS unit uh, at KCCA. And and the, those that uh, that are supposed to maintain this, in in the best situation, we will have the direct link to their database, but everything is just stuck in shape files. So I think that the the there was a lot of ideas about this portal and how it should be, but the challenges was that we were struggling with the ownership of it, and 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 I think. It more and more became a product where people wanted to, like where UNICEF wanted to, to see what you could use your data for and you, that you can actually build it in open source. And they, want, they were hoping that then people will further develop it and then use it in other places. Um, so I think that was the plan. Um, so yeah, but there, there is just a lot of challenges and you are, you are facing the same challenges and yeah. Everybody in the humanitarian sector is facing that. 
uh, just have to run over the last one. Uh, yeah, so story map, just uh, they also, they were thinking that they wanted to yeah, to, to to show to the general public what challenges that are going on. So they were making these stories where you could just go to a uh, to uh, a day of uh, of one of uh, a girl's uh, life in uh, in Kampala. It's actually built in StoryMapJS. I don't know if you know it. it StoryMapJS, and uh, it's a really useful uh, tool if you uh, b want to build uh, story maps because. Of I think most people, when they hear about story maps, they, they think it's for story maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's actually it, it looks it looks like an ISWI uh, loading, but it's it's actually a story map JS. And if, if you go in there, then it's open source and an MIT license. So yeah, powered by JSON. So it's very easy. They actually are if for non-tech people. They also have an interface, so you can just link it up directly with your Dropbox and so on. It's made with, uh, by someone called Nightlab, and um, and they are doing some really good stuff. Uh, that you can, it's it's not geography that the maps are, but then they also have some time timelines and so on. So yeah, uh, don't think we had more. Maybe we can just go back to. Like the main, yeah, yeah, like the main site. So plan was, I want place to collect all data, try to force KCCA to understand that data can be used to any, that can can actually be used for something, and it can be interactive. Um, I will say that the project is probably still running at UNICEF. Our part is done because, like, we have developed it, we have handed over the code and so on. But I think UNICEF, they're still having this ongoing uh, discussion with KCCA to kind of convince them that this is the way to go. There's no reason that everybody is doing the same in the same parish with if they can see that there is a need in another parish. So yeah, <coughs> questions, comments? Thank you, uh, Desire and Lars. And are there any questions? Please, please use. Yeah, thanks. So I have two questions. The first one: uh, so you're using you're using the four Ws, but it doesn't it usually have a, a time. So are you is your dashboard show temporal uh, of the system? That's the first question. Yeah, a challenge with that is initially we weren't sure that we would get time, like um, date. a date. Yeah, so. That's catered for in the field, but we thought we shouldn't do it now, maybe in version two. Uh, so for time where it's available, we just show it in the table, in the summary table, start and end date, and then you can kind of filter uh, based on that. Uh, but yeah. I think they were, it was also because they also wanted to, who have also done something before, it was maybe not who's doing something now, it's also what knowledge is already existing. So if an organization is working in one parish, then maybe you should ask that organization before you go in yeah. yourself and see if they have already done the, the job. Uh, my second question is about the uh, Google Sheet that you use. So people enter and fill in their information, the NGOs, and, uh, but aren't you afraid that they could change other previous data? Uh, I, I don't know if you want to take, but yeah, that. The, the, you you can you can design your 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 Google Sheet as m almost as you want. This is a little bit more complicated. We have we have used it in other cases where it's basically just like do we have the PIM map? Actually, yeah. uh, the map. So yeah, we uh, we also have some example where it's just like a column. So it's like it's like looking at a CSV file, and that's actually also what is going on behind it. It will take that Google and then they will like convert it to something usable and yeah. Uh, so um, you already identified one of the biggest problems of ownership. Uh, it might be an impossible question, but in, in an ideal world to make this most impactful, who from the stakeholders 
should own this and really maintain it. Mm. The, yeah, it, it has to be owned by, by KCCA themselves in this case. Mm -hmm. I will say that this is open source. People uh, can just take it to whatever process they want. So if they are having a who does what where situation I within the organization, then they can also just do that. Um, but someone has to own it. Uh, and I think that was I think that that was a consideration that maybe UNICEF didn't think about was going to be so difficult in the end. Uh, excuse me. Uh, also to answer your question about uh, the data and also yours a bit about who owns it. True, anyone could add uh, data to this, to this sheet, but uh, the, the data that actually gets pulled into the portal is uh, much simpler. Um, and easier to for program programmatically to um, to use, uh, so it's only uh, it's only the owner of the of the portal that can edit and this sheet. Anyone could. So it's so the idea was to allow access to this, so anyone could uh, to specific not everyone but to specific people, and then there's a validation check, and then then that's what goes into the sheet. So we were, we were trying to uh, say, like humanize the data entry a little bit, so people don't have any tech. Everybody knows Google Sheets. Everybody can use an Excel sheet. So that was th that was the idea, that this is easy, and then we c we will make the checks to make sure that they can feed into the portal. Yeah, follow up no. question on the maintenance question. So you you said it should be the city authority that maintains it. For this part here, for the 4W map, I understand that's quite easy to fill in. What about the other map about the infrastructures, yeah. which needs coordinates? Have you foreseen any, let's say, uh, pipeline for that? Like and sorry, and I'll just give a second question then. Has there been any discussion about crowdsourcing this kind of, or at least parts of the, the layers, or having, let's say, the official layers and crowdsourced layers or something like that? Um, yeah, to that, uh, I d the ideal situation is that all this data gets pulled in from uh, a server or database. Uh, as we were building this, uh, I think KCC was just starting to set one up, and and once they start populating it, a bit, and, and, and it all comes down to who owns the data. Um, crowdsourcing is fine. It could also be that we take the data from OpenStreetMap if need be, but what we did was we made a push, we went to the city authority and, says, and said, give us this data, and then they looked around their, their flash drives and all this and found some shape files to give us. So, yeah, it's not the ideal situation, but it's what it is. Yeah, at, 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 like, it can easily be changed to whatever data source. If they want to use OpenStreetMap, then it's just some scripting and then, then it's converted to a GeoJSON and then, then, then you will have your updated data. I think for UNICEF, they wanted to force KCCA to realize that they have to share the data if they have to make it useful. So they wanted to take that discussion with them that they wanted us to go to that JS department and say that we need this data. And then they will ask us, why do you need it? And then we can show them this, and this is why we need it. And then like, to get a better understanding of why data sharing is so important. Good, excellent. Another round of applause. So uh, I just thought you're an excellent audience the speak and the speakers. You keep to the time. You have good questions. Super. I love that. <laughs>